have calculated that Beta Niobe will go nova in approximately three and a half hours. Now our instruments show that no intelligent life remains on the planet. Big three beam it down. One of the last times. This appears to be an archive or library of some kind. Dude, Star Trek in the back rooms? That's fine. Where do we start? May I help you? I am the librarian. That guy's familiar. Mr. Mr. Atos. I confess that I'm a little surprised to see you. I had thought that everyone had long since gone. May I help you? <laughs> They're gonna play the sound effect every time. <laughs> Just how many of you are there? You think uh, James McAvoy uh, for Split watched this episode? To explore strange new worlds. Oh man. Maybe it's because I very rarely rewatch something, but it's like I'm getting that feeling like, oh man, we're not, I'm never gonna hear this theme again or see the intro again. But I can easily yeah. just, you know, watch it whenever you want. Yeah. <laughs> But it's like I'm so like worried about like wasting time or like, oh no, I gotta consume new things, you know, I gotta expand my filmography. But I, it's like, oh if I watch something I've already seen, I'm wasting time. Ah, I'm gonna die soon. Keep it keep it moving. Keep it moving. The sludge must flow. Wasn't there another one like named similar to this? Or have people been talking about this episode? Well, no, I mean, there's been tomorrow was yesterday, yesterday, tomorrow, <laughs> you know, <laughs> return to tomorrow, when it, you know. I warn you most urgently, make your escape before it's too late. Makes you wonder why they came down here if they knew the, you know, the sun's going supernova in three and a half hours. The library is your key. Oh, it's in the wrong file. No, that was neat. This is a fascinating machine. What is it? Ah, uh, this is the Atavacron. May I... Oh, no, sir, no. I must ask you not to touch the controlling mechanism. Return and make your selection. So it's a time machine? My favorite episode of Star Trek ever is a time travel episode, so... <laughs> Ooh, look at this outside. Yeah, what is that? I haven't prepared you. <laughs> oh! 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 Okay. oh. It is a time machine, okay. Oh no! Oh, he sw did he switch it with the the thing? Defend yourself. And he just goes right with it. I've been trained in a thousand ways to kick your ass. I fought gods, computers. Uh, Gorns, you're no yeah. match for me. Heating this boat may provide some temporary heat. Oh yes, here we go. <laughs> oh no! Glad... What's wrong? Oh. Something's preventing my phaser from operating. I'm glad these two are together. I'm sure we'll have some good buddy cop uh, banter. Like, yeah, how are either of them gonna get back? You better come back with me to the library. You'll be safe there. Where's library? Right over there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. You remember when you first saw me? Do you remember whether I came through some kind of door? Oh. But you know what I'm thinking? If if we don't cut back soon, like, is this going to be strictly the big three? Bones? Spock? Captain! We hear you, but we cannot see you! <laughs> We're in a wilderness of Arctic characteristics. He means it's cold! <laughs> that is a mistake. I'm no thief. What's happening? Lord help us. What's that? <laughs> Keep talking now. Oh! Jim sounded like he was in trouble. We may be in trouble ourselves. We must find shelter. Really went all out. Yeah, I guess like we haven't really seen like a lot of snow in this show, and I'm thinking about it because why would you? My hands and face are frostbitten. I can't feel my feet. Go try to find Jim. We go together. You stubborn, thick-headed Vulcan! <laughs> oh 
Oh shit. Takes off the hood, it's Janice. Janice! <laughs> this is where you went. <laughs> Ooh, another set. They are kind of setting it up like it's supposed to be a reveal. But who could it be? Yeah. Disagreeably warm here. Oh, look at the, the ice on his face. I've been here for so long, alone. When I saw you out there, I couldn't believe it. It says have a lot of kind of similar traits to City on the Edge of Forever. I mean, there's the time traveling portal. Bones is about to be dead. There's the more tension. But then you have this storyline. <laughs> You're the thief who talks to spirits. I was reading in the library when I heard her scream. <laughs> Perhaps your part in this is innocent. This guy must have came through as well and just made his best to fit in. Yes, I know nothing of this, nothing of these matters. I will not Let hear me speak to you. It's not how I expected that to go. <laughs> no, not at all. McCoy. McCoy. All right, back to the more interesting story. Who are you? My name is Zara Beth. You removed the fake ice makeup. You're fine now. We will carry Dr. McCoy, and you must come with us. I can't go through the portal again. If I do, I will die. None of us can go back. When we come through the portal, we are changed by the Atavacron. You can't go back. If you go through the portal again, you will die by the time you reach the other side. You know, that would be kind of hard-hitting if this was the last episode. Give me your cuff. <laughs> Cry out. I'll break it. Be really funny if like this is one of those like back of the future things where it's like it affected the future and that's because of this incident they invented the uh, you know like the sliding box things where you put the stuff in, close the drawer <laughs> oh. and they open it on the other side. Help me return to the library. I've lost my way. I must get back there. You cannot get back. I tell you I must. We must live out our lives here in the past. He knows. Return to the future would mean instant death. This must be where all the people were sent because of the supernova. So they all chose somewhere and they realize it sucks, but they're like, oh, we can't go back. We can only hope that he's well wherever he is. What do you mean we can only hope? Haven't you done anything about it? We can't get back. Wasn't that clear to you? Yes, that was clear to me. And perhaps you were too ill to understand what can't get back means. Now you listen to me, you pointed eared Vulcan. I don't like that. What's happening to you, Spock? Nothing that shouldn't have happened long ago. Jesus. Spock just falls apart without Kirk around. Or maybe the uh, portal affected him in some way when it changed him. But I like to yeah. see it as the boiling point of three seasons coming to a head between <laughs> these two. Of course. Yeah. Long ago. A long ago, before the Vulcans got rid of emotion? Is that what he means? Because remember how they were on the brink of war? And they, that's why they got rid of all emotion? That's it! What? Oh! So it really was just right there. Oh, there you go. He's dead. Well, he seems to be okay. It was a lie. I was prepared to escape! I'll let you out in a minute. There, go. See you. <laughs> oh, shit. We'll tell you this time, real or not. <laughs> All right. Put that thing away. <laughs> oh, damn. Ooh. This guy's almost a stun, stun phaser. I tell you, you're beautiful. Why would I say that? <gasps> Is it so wrong to tell you so? I have longed to hear you say it. His bones just sitting in the corner like... Oh, shit. There you go, Spock. So I guess this is the answer that it wasn't just a pent-up frustration over three seasons. It's... Yeah, definitely something biological. Returning to a caveman. Gotta stay where you are, sir. I'll see you again. Oh, God. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> he tried to scoot him in. That's pretty funny. <laughs> what? Oh! Oh! oh. oh. Come on, Kirk, break the arms, German suplex, sit him right through there. There you go. Spock. You've been dishonest with me, Spock. 
He's doing the Omni Man. Thanks, Spock. Think. I do not know who I am. And really glad that uh, Bones is getting this episode because he's been such a background character lately. There's no portal here, Doctor. It's hopeless. Bones. Spock. It's Jim. Come on, Spock. You start ahead, Doctor. If I go back, I will die. I hope you had time to hit while Bones was sleeping. Aw, oh, that's good. Yeah, they put some eye drops so she can turn around. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? Wait, what? Remember, it's about to blow up, so it's like, alright, I'm out of here. As you can see, I returned to the present in every sense. But it did happen, Spock. Yes, it happened. But that was 5,000 years ago. And she is dead now, dead and buried, long ago. Scotty, are you there? It's no or never, Captain. Well, I don't think she's buried, but I guess just naturally the Earth would eventually. What is that? That's the supernova. It's, it's happening. No Enterprise shots in this episode. That's, that's wild. Uh, yeah, I love this episode. We didn't, uh, they're like, okay, we can have a B-plot, but we don't need it to have it happen on the Enterprise. We can split up our big three, save some money and some casting, but they really went all out for all the sets. Fantastic stuff, and just, uh, the dynamics between Bones and Spock and just their, uh, ancestral ways, like, slowly creeping in. That whole, them, like, diving apart. I really wish we, besides that, I really wish we figured out why those two people couldn't go back through the portal like what was explained to them maybe they saw someone go back through that went down with them and they you know they blew up or something but that was a little like eh. Uh, my favorite performance has to be the old guy and his replicas that was hilarious just playing the sound effect for every time one of them popped on screen popped me so hard and the ending where he's just like screw this i'm not a, so a solid entry in my opinion yeah um i definitely thought it was a good one um but for me it all just comes down to leonard nimoy and deforest kelly spock and bones in this episode i mean this episode it's all about their performance and chemistry and they've been a constant through the whole show uh but in this third season it's been a lot a lot of different stuff bones hasn't really been in the mix a, a lot of the episodes and to see them have this story together without kirk there at all um, for most of it, that was the huge highlight of the episode for me. And the rest of the stuff, there was some fun stuff, some funny moments, like the, the trying to push him on the scooter, trying to push Kirk on the scooter, yeah. a couple of funny things here and there. I didn't really care for any of the stuff at the location Kirk went to. I could leave all that. It was, I guess it was neat seeing him do the little sword fight, but all the rest of the stuff I could, that, that was the weakest part for me. Um, but everything with Spock and Bones just is what made this episode what it was for me. And I'm so glad that we got to see at least one more, like, trademark Spock and Bones performance uh, in episode. So that, that's what I'm going to mostly take from this. Yeah, it felt like, it almost felt like Kirk was the B-plot in this episode, which is weird. And because, especially with Spock having a love, love interest and Kirk not having one. Yeah, I, I really don't have much else to say about this episode. I mean, I'm you know, before I just start diving into more of the overall thoughts of, like, being at the end of the show and there only being one episode left to watch and don't want to dwell on that too much yet because I'm sure we'll get into that as we watch the last episode and with all of our wrap-up discussions so I won't jump too much into there but yeah overall I thought this episode was just solid there was one really good thing I liked about it and the rest of it was just fine there wasn't anything that I found to be terrible or, or you know that I really didn't like so yeah a solid one for me so i guess we can just just end it there you guys let us know what you think of all our yesterdays and if it's your first time here make sure to subscribe every single episode of star trek except for the last episode we have reactions to up on the channel and the last one will be up shortly and then we'll be jumping into the animated series the movies next generation all that good stuff so stick around become part of the target audience 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. Actually, we're going straight from this to Star Trek Picard. We're, trying, <laughs> we're <laughs> jumping right into it. <laughs> we're jumping right into it. Not and then after Picard, either. after Picard, we're gonna go right to Discovery. We're start working backwards. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to 2009 <laughs> Star Trek. <laughs> That'll do it for us here at the uh, TA. I'm Alex. This is Josh. We are the target audience. Content's made for absolutely everybody. We think specifically made for us guys, but hopefully for you guys as well. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. <laughs>